everybody. Happy New Year. One of the things we want to talk about today is camping at state parks. We camp at a lot of state parks and there's a reason for that. We're cheap. <laughs> well, they are very inexpensive, okay? And we do like that. It fits within our budget. We prefer the layout, usually, uh, being in a state park. You feel like you're more in the middle of an outdoor experience than some of these commercial campgrounds where you feel like you're in a drive-in movie theater or parked in a parking lot with everybody else. Yeah, we don't have little kids. We don't need all the bells and whistles, the swimming pool and the shuffleboard and the arcade room. We, we really steer away from all that, all the activities. Every now and then we'll go to a campground like that. But for the most part, when we go camping, we just want the solitude and the serenity out with state parks. Yeah, and and they're reasonable. Aren't really extremely high sociable people that need three other couples to drink wine with every evening. We're perfectly capable of drinking alone. Especially him. <laughs> okay. So I put together this video. This is talking about the state parks in New Jersey, the ones that you can camp at. And we've camped, we haven't camped at all of them, but we're going to list in here the ones that we have camped at. If you're camping in New Jersey, you want to be aware of, we do have some poisonous snakes. And we do have some bear, mainly up north, and that is black bear. They're not as dangerous as grizzlies, but they still can be very aggressive, especially if they're with their cubs. So just be mindful that there are black bear, especially the further north in New Jersey that you go. But the Delaware Water Gap, especially further up, is definitely bear country. We didn't stay at a state park in the Delaware Water Gap, but we did canoe and camp in the Delaware Water Gap. So that's coming up. How far do you think we had the canoe from where we put into the campsites? Well, the entire trip from the boat launch at Dingman's Ferry. That's where we put in? Down to the visitor center, which is down by Route 80 on the river. That total distance is about 26 miles. So here's um, the thing. You're going to be paddling that whole time. No, we had a motor on our canoe, so we cheated. But my son and his girlfriend were with us in the kayaks, so they did paddle the whole time. It can move fast or slow, depending on the current. So the campsites are first come, first serve. So we were kind of in a rush to well, get to a site. Let me interrupt you on that. I have heard that this year is going to change. There's no longer uh, supposedly going to be first come, first serve. You're going to have to reserve campsites like you do anyplace else from what I've read. I haven't verified this myself, but that's, that's the rumor. At the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to New Jersey Outdoors where the reservation link is, and that's where you would get this information. It's, it's great. It was fun. It was remote. I will say that we went in September, mm -hmm. and... At nighttime, it was below 30 degrees, and we were in mummy bags, and we had a heater on in the morning when we got up. It was cold. I can't believe how cold it got in September, but it went below 32 degrees. Be mindful of, you know, what you need to to take with you. Like I said, our, kayak, our canoe was so packed with stuff. But it's beautiful up there. It's a lot of fun. Again, it's rustic. It's just a toilet out in the middle of the woods. Yes. <laughs> in the Delaware Water Gap, a lot of the campsites, they've got pit latrines, but there's no shed around them. It's just, yep. they're strategically placed usually behind a little thicket of bushes so that you're not, uh, you don't feel like you're on thrown on stage, but they're out in the open. So the other body of water that we camped on was Spruce Run. Now, we had a lakeside spot which was beautiful. It took me a little bit to find that that spot. Um, you're gonna have to reserve in advance, but Spruce Run, I think, is a beautiful campground. I love being right on the lake because we took our kayak right there. There's like an inner circle, um, you know, that's not right on the lake. They only have a few sites that have full hookup. I believe the campground said they allowed pets online, but there were no pets there. And I thought there, I saw a sign saying no pets. Now there was an algae bloom, so I don't know if that was it. And it was, you know, during COVID and the beach was closed and stuff. So again, check their websites. Um, but it's a beautiful campground. 
again, it's more peaceful, it's quiet. Uh, there's not a whole lot, of, there is a playground for the kids. But, you know, it's kind of quiet, rustic camping, a lot of tents and stuff. Um, no electric. Did We had no water either, right? Did we have water? No, I, I, I can't recall. I don't think we had water. Yeah, we no hookups. Get it from across the street at a hydrant. Right. But it was beautiful. I definitely would go back there again. Last year, around Thanksgiving, one of the few sites that was open around here, was was in Wharton State Park. We were no hookup again. Uh, we took the camper in and we stayed at Axion Lake. And I mean, that was pretty nice actually. It wasn't very crowded, no, not in Thanksgiving. Well, we stayed at, it's Axion Family Campground, which the campground itself is not really right on the lake, if you will, but uh, it's part of Warden State Park, and, and it's very close to Atzeon Lake. But there are there are like cabins that they rent that are actually adjacent to the water. But the campground is like off yeah. past the end of the lake. With there are two camps in New Jersey that you have to boat into. One is Round Valley, and the other one is the Delaware Water Gap. Well, the Delaware Water Gap is not a state park, that's a national park, but... Oh, okay. But Round Valley is a, a state park. You can either go to your campsite by boat at Round Valley, or you can backpack in, but it's about a six-mile hike in with all your gear. So we boated in, and I don't... I like boating in. It's not that I don't like it, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of gear that you got to put into the canoe or kayak. And obviously you're not taking a camper, <laughs> you're tent camping. Well, it still beats backpacking it in <clears throat> any day of the week. It probably does, but I mean, you'll, you'll see some of the pictures. Our, our canoe was so loaded up and everything was in trash bags and everything. Now, I will say this about the two of them. Um, Round Valley uh, is big. It's a big body of water. When it gets windy, uh, those you can have waves whipping up on and which is what we had we actually had white caps when we were going out to our campsite um thank god we had a motor on the canoe because i don't think i would have been able to paddle through the surf it was so rough and i was soaked by the time we got to our camp campsite because the water was splashing over the front of the canoe so um Otherwise, if it was calm and it was the next day, it would have been very easy to paddle. But you have to be aware that, you know, on, on a large body of water with uh, the, the wind, it can change in a heartbeat. So I did really like Round Valley. Um, Round Valley is got a history. It is known as the, the Bermuda Triangle of New Jersey. And it's very, very deep in spots. And I think because it's so deep and because it's such a big body of water and the wind kicks up, um, people drowned in there. And people go missing in there. There are, what, seven people, bodies, they say, are yeah, still missing? Yeah, there's at least seven that supposedly have never been recovered from there. It's 160 feet deep in its deepest point. Mm -hmm. And there are still remnants of an old village that used to exist there. There's streets and uh, foundations of buildings down in the bottom of this reservoir. So apparently the, they wanted to, I guess, make this a reservoir, so they bought the town out or made everyone yeah, leave with eminent domain? took the land by eminent domain with the intention of creating this reservoir, which is really only there for emergency use. It's a backup reservoir. Uh, they merely store water there in case we would have an extreme drought that the other reservoirs aren't adequate in and of themselves. But it's a beautiful lake or reservoir. The water is crystal clear. And you can also, because it's so clear there, people go scuba diving there. I know you've gone scuba diving there. And people go look at the remnants of the old... I, didn't that guy say it's an old schoolhouse or church or something there? I don't remember exactly, but yeah, there's a there's a lot down there. Yeah. So this water's crystal clear, which is what makes it so awesome. Um, and they actually flooded it. Well, they bought out the people from this village in 1950, flooded it out. So there's some, like, huge concrete slabs and 
that there's a church and all kinds of stuff under here. Schoolhouse. And do your right. Rain your right. Oh, hey. Okay, I'm braving the elements out here. We had some snow. There's our canoe covered in snow. There's the camper. But I know some of you guys, and there's my crazy dogs running around. I know some of you guys are going to have questions about that, how he mounted that motor. So I will put that video right up here. Look up in the, in the right hand corner, and I will link to that video. And actually, just look up for. Anytime you see an eye in that upper right hand corner, it means I, th I put up another video that you may want to watch that could be relevant to something. The other state park we went to was Alaire State Park. I can't find the photos from this camping trip. Went there, I believe we stayed over on a Thursday night and it was great, it was remote, nobody was there. And then by Friday night, a bunch of Cub Scouts had come in. Uh, it was right in the beginning of COVID. I don't know what's around there. It looked like there was a lot around there that, that was nice. Um, the big drawback that I did not like about this campground, so close to the New Jersey Parkway, that all you did was hear motorcycles rushing up and down the street all night long. This year, hopefully, we can get to more of these state parks. That's that's the goal. But we're like I said, we're going to take some time out west, but hopefully we can get to more. I would like to try High Point, Cheesequake. Where... Did you, where else have you been? I've camped over at, I think it's called Batona, which is over by the Carranza Memorial there below Tabernacle. That's the Jersey Devil territory. Uh, right yeah, there. I've camped down in uh, Hawkins Bridge. I've camped in a campground down in Bass River State Forest. So that is all part of the Pine Barrens. Now, I'm going to do a whole separate video. We have already went out there, walked through the Pine Barrens. We're planning on camping out in the Pine Barrens as soon as we get a couple nice warm weather days. That is the home of the Jersey Devil, okay? If you're not from New Jersey, you probably never heard of the Jersey Devil. I'm gonna do the whole video on the Jersey Devil that's gonna be in the video when we're camping, okay? Some history about that. It's folklore or whatever. It goes back hundreds of years. So I'll put that in there, but we're hoping to get there as soon as we get a couple nice days, we're trying to, you know, take a quick trip. It's not that far from here. But like I said, we have no problem with the state parks. We prefer the state parks, um, especially because they're so reasonable. So at the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to New Jersey Outdoors. There's That's where you pick your, your site, make reservations. Don't assume that they're all pet friendly. Some of them, only certain sites are. Park rangers can be strict. You're not really supposed to have liquor or anything like that. I'm not saying people don't, but you know, keep it on the down low, I guess. When I first moved down here in the 80s, New Jersey had this park rangers. Now they have this state park police. They seem uh, less friendly, tougher, more strict. Uh, in general, the, uh, the state park service personnel than they were years ago when I first moved down here. They're very uh, intolerant of any infractions. Gung-ho. <laughs> Gung-ho would be another one, yeah. Step away from the tent. Oh, and, and by the way, you can only have the motor size for these uh, boats or what, only? Yeah, 9.9 .9 max. It has to be under 10 horsepower. Yeah. I think the only lake in New Jersey that allows more than a 10 horsepower motor is the Patcom. Mm -hmm. uh, Union Lakes 9.9, .9, so. As you can see, there are campgrounds located all throughout New Jersey. Some are pet friendly, but not all of them. Some campgrounds may have cabins or even group cabins that you can rent. Some have yurts or shelters or lean-tos. Or some just have primitive camping areas. Below in the description, I'm going to leave a link to their website where you can make a reservation and check out all the information about any of these campgrounds. 
So there you go. That's the state parks in New Jersey. I know it's only January, but believe me, these sites fill up quickly, especially if you want a, a primo lakefront spot. So be sure to book something soon and happy camping. That's a wrap, everyone. You know what to do if you like this video. You all come back now, you hear? Bye.